So the Leon Lee O11 Dynamic Evo XL is here, and like the original O11 Dynamic Evo, it comes in two colors, black and white. The black version is going to set you back just under 235 US dollars, with the white version costing you an extra $10. So that is currently round about $75 more than you'll pay for the original O11 Dynamic Evo. For your money, you are getting a much bigger case. The O11 Dynamic Evo XL is 57mm longer, 19mm wider and 72.9mm taller. And it's not just a bigger case that you're getting, the XL version of this case is crammed full of new features and improvements. So let's dive in and take a closer look. So out of the box, the tempered glass side panels on the side and the front are secured with security screws. So to get at these, you're going to have to remove the top panel by removing the thumb screw at the top and pulling backwards. You can then remove the two security screws at the top, which is going to allow you to remove the tempered glass panels on the side and at the front. So now we come on to what I think is one of this case's biggest improvements in terms of aesthetics, and that is that we can now remove the pillar at the front. There's two screws at the top and two at the bottom, and once these are removed, the pillar can simply be pulled away. And if we put the tempered glass panels back into place, you'll see what I'm talking about in terms of the aesthetics. This looks so much cleaner, and there's almost a seamless gap between the two tempered glass panels. The other side panel can simply be pulled off from the back. Now, if we take a look at the back of this, you'll notice there's no dust filters installed out of the box. But in the case of accessory box, you do get two magnetically attached dust filters to install on the side panel if you wish, and also one for the top of the case. As well, we've got a tray style dust filter installed at the bottom of the case. Taking a look at the front I.O., compared to the O11 Dynamic Evo, we have got an additional two USB Type-A ports with four in total. We've also got a single Type-C port and a combined head for a microphone jack. Moving the I.O. module is really straightforward and it can be moved to both the side and the rear of the case. As well, on the side of the case, we've got a power and reset button as well as a colour and mode button to control the ARGB lighting effects on the case's front ARGB light strip. It's just a simple matter of pressing the colour button to cycle through the case's built-in static colours, and if you press the M button it will cycle through the more dynamic effects. You are going to be able to sync up the light strip with either your motherboard or Leon Lee's L Connect by plugging the included ARGB cable either into an ARGB header on your motherboard or a Leon Lee Unifan hub. And then all you need to do is hold the colour button in for three seconds to sync up with either your motherboard or Leon Lee's L Connect. In terms of fan and radiator support, at the top, the bottom and the side, you can fit up to three 140mm fans or up to three 420mm radiators. At the rear of the case, it's either one or two 120mm fans, depending on the height you've installed your motherboard at. If you want to go with three 120mm fans at the side and you're worried that it might not look great with big gaps at the top or at the bottom, Lee and Lee have got you covered and they include two cover plates to help the cover with this gap and this certainly improves the aesthetics and should also help promote better airflow throughout the case. You can install these one either side of a set of three fans or both cover plates at the bottom or at the top. We've got removable fan stroke radiator brackets at the top, the bottom and the side and the one at the side can be inserted either way, giving you more space in the main compartment or more space in the second compartment. In terms of motherboard support, as you'd expect in a case of this size, it is up to EITX, and if you want to go with a CPU or cooler, the maximum height supported is 167mm. So it is possible to move the motherboard tray either up or down, making more space at the top or the bottom, depending on how you want to lay out your hardware. By default, out of the box, the motherboard tray comes installed in the middle position, and to free it up, what you need to do is loosen the two captive thumb screws over to the right-hand side, and remove two thumb screws from the rear of the case. This is then going to allow you to slide the motherboard tray forward, and if you want, you can actually remove it from the case and build with your motherboard and graphics card outside the case before installing the whole thing in one go. So you'll notice at the rear of the case we've got two little plates, one installed either side of where the motherboard tray was. If you want to move your motherboard up to the highest setting, you simply need to remove the top tray and install it at the bottom, and then when you insert your motherboard, everything will have moved up by 36mm. If you want to move your motherboard down, so you're going to move both of these brackets towards the top, and that's then going to move your motherboard to its lowest setting, and it's going to move it down again by 36mm from the middle setting. And it is important to point out that having your motherboard installed in the lowest setting is the only one that is going to allow you to install two 120mm fans at the rear of the case. 
With the motherboard tray out of the case, you can see the large selection of rubber grommets that we have installed. So no matter which setting you put your motherboard tray in, the cable should be well managed. In terms of graphics card support, like the original O11 Dynamic Evo, you are going to be able to install your graphics card in the horizontal, the vertical, and the upright position. And the maximum length of graphics card supported is up to 460 millimeters. At the rear of the case, we've got eight horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets, and these are divided up into two groups of four. So you're going to be able to install your graphics card toollessly in this case. You need to remove the thumb screw at the back, and then you're going to be able to open the magnetic door and remove the appropriate slot covers. So rather than using screws, there's little bits of metal that protrude from the side of the case, and these are going to pass through your graphics card. You're then going to close the magnetic door and replace the thumb screw to hold the graphics card in place. So as well as being able to accommodate really large graphics cards, your graphics cards should be really well supported in this case, no matter what size of motherboard you go with, because it includes a really nice GPU support bracket, which is able to be installed in two different positions, depending on whether you want to go with an ATX or EATX motherboard. If you want to install your graphics card vertically in the case, the case is compatible with Leon Lead Universal's four-slot vertical GPU kit. And if you want to install it in the upright position, there is a new upright mounting kit and 900mm riser cable. Installing your graphics card in the XL version of the case should be so much easier than the original O11 Dynamic Evo, because rather than mounting the bracket to the top of the case, it's actually going to mount onto the removable bracket on the side, meaning you can do most of the installation on the table. And because you and I are installed on the side bracket, there is three different heights your card can be installed at. Depending on the size of your card, you should hopefully be able to get it well centered on the bracket. So once you've installed the graphics card to the bracket, it's just a simple matter of returning the side bracket to the case. And you can see with the really long 900mm riser cable, you're not going to have any problem breaching your PCIe slots on the motherboard, routing the cable around the back of the case where it's going to look nice and tidy. Another new feature with the XL version of the case is that you can now have your graphics card I.O. at the bottom of the case rather than at the top. And it's just really a simple matter if you've already installed it one way of simply turning the bracket round to move the I.O. to the bottom. So this might not seem like a big deal, but in the original version of the O11 Dynamic Evo, I had used a Strix card and it really did not like being installed with the I.O. at the top where it actually was overheating. But inverting the case round and having the I.O. at the bottom, the card was perfectly happy and actually we got some of the best temperatures in the case. So now you don't have to invert your case if you want the I.O. at the bottom. It's just a simple matter of turning the side bracket round, which is absolutely brilliant. Your HDMI or DisplayPort cable running from your graphics card should look really clean as well. If you install your graphics card with the I.O. at the top, there's a cutout at the rear of the case that you can pass the cable through. While if you install it with the I.O. at the bottom, you can change out your bottom PCI expansion slot cover bracket to one that has a hole in it and pass your cable through it. Moving to the case's second compartment, and we've got a magnetic cable covered door. And one of the really nice things about this door is the magnetic attachment is really strong. So it does a great job of staying closed even when your cables are applying some pressure to it. On the inside of that door, you're going to be able to mount up to three two and a half inch drives. While the case also has two hard drive cages, which will accommodate it up to four two and a half inch or four three and a half inch drives. Now these are hot swappable hard drive cages. You'll see that they've got the SATA data and SATA power cables coming from them. So all you need to do is remove your drive trays. You want to move the little notch at the top towards open, and that then frees up the drive trays from the cage. After mounting your drives to the tray, and you have to do it in a certain orientation, to install them, it's just a simple matter of pushing them into the tray, and then the data and power connections on the drive are going to hook up with the cables. To keep your drives running nice and cool in each of the hard drive cages, it is possible to mount a 120mm fan, although it is only a slim fan up to a maximum thickness of 15mm. If you don't want to install any hard drives or SSDs, the hard drive cages are removable. There's just four screws on the back that you need to remove, and that's going to give you additional space for your cables. In terms of cable management, this looks pretty good. We've got plenty of Velcro cable straps, and we've also got these cable clips. There's two installed in the case out of the box, and an additional one in the case accessory box. And the idea behind these cable clips is your large power supply cables are going to go into the metal bits of the clips, and then your smaller cables are going to be managed in front of this using the Velcro cable straps. Your power supply is going to go in between the two hard drive cages, and you can see we've got a mounting bracket to rest it on. And the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 220mm. 
Like the original version of the O11 Dynamic Evo, it is possible to invert the case, although there seems to be less steps involved with the XL version. So after removing all the panels and fan and radiator brackets, you just need to free up the USB cable and pull them through to the bottom of the case. There's then a little button you're going to be able to press which is going to allow you to free up the bottom of the case. It's then just a simple matter of moving this to the top, slotting it into place and then replacing your I.O. cables. Then all you need to simply do is move your power supply support bracket and replace the fan stroke radiator brackets and all the panels. So the main reason I think that you would want to do this is if you want to come up with a slightly different looking build or if you plan to have your PC sitting on the left hand side of your desk, this is going to give you a better view into it. So what I want to do now is give you a look at the build I put together in the case. So taking a look at the temperatures, our Ryzen 9 7900X idled at 43 degrees and reached a maximum of 94 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. The Aorus Master RTX 4070 idled at 29 degrees and reached a maximum of 51 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, we had an average noise level of 36 decibels at idle and 56 decibels under load. So you'll notice in that build video I had installed Leon Lee's brand new SL Infinity reverse uni fans at the bottom and at the side set to intake where they looked absolutely brilliant. But what I wanted to test was this case can accommodate 140mm fans, three of them at the bottom and at the side. What would happen if we replaced the 120 with 140mm fans? So here there was an absolutely no difference to our CPU and GPU temperatures both at idle and under load although there was a significant noise saving with the 140mm fans, our idle noise came down by 2 decibels and our noise under load came down by 5 decibels. So these results shouldn't come as a big surprise. When we compare the specs of the fans, the reverse fans actually have a maximum noise level 4 decibels higher than the 140mm version of these fans. The 140mm version of the fans also have a better airflow and better static pressure. So the temperature results and noise levels made perfect sense. So you're going to have to decide really what you think looks best and what is more important to you. If you want to get the best noise levels and fill your case out, the 140mm fans make sense. Although there is absolutely no denying that the new reverse SL Infinity Uni fans look absolutely amazing. So I haven't done an awful lot of thermal testing in the case at the moment. I just really wanted to answer the question about whether you should install 140mm or 120mm fans in this case. And in particular, giving you a look both with and without the reverse uni fans. Um, so if you are thinking of doing a build, hopefully this will be useful to you. Um, if enough of you are interested and you leave me a comment, I may do a best fan configuration for this case like I've done with the original version of the 11 Dynamic Evo. And things we could answer here are whether two fans at the back or one fan at the back is the right thing to do. Whether actually the motherboard tray position makes any difference. What about the dust filters? Should you have your AIO at the side? And does mounting your graphics card in the vertical or the upright position make any difference? So if you are interested in me making a video like that, drop me a comment asking for it and enough if you ask for it I will put it together. So now I want to come on to my experience of building in the case and as you'd expect being such a big case building in it was really straightforward but there is probably a few tips that I can give you to avoid running into any problems. The first is it's great that you have the option of removing the pillar at the front of the case. Leon Lee do mention in the manual that you should put it back in if you're going to be transporting the case you see in the build guide that I did, I had it out for most of the build guide. Although when I was inverting the case, I did put it back in. My advice is probably leave this pillar in and take it out at the last minute, just before you're about to put the tempered glass panels back into place. Because the tempered glass panels are going to be adding support to the top of the case. 
And I would worry if you're trying to install your AIO at the top and you are pressing on it without the pillar in, you may actually bend your case. So it's a great feature. I think it's actually one of the biggest improvements in terms of the aesthetics of this case, but leave it to the end before you actually remove it. The other important thing is if you are planning on installing your graphics card in the upright position, because it is now fixed to your side bracket, there is a little thumb screw at the back to lock the bracket in place. So I would just be really careful with you actually put the thumb screw into place when you've installed your graphics card. Because if you were accidentally to press the button on the back of the case and your graphics card was sitting on the side bracket, there is potential for it to fall out and get damaged. The final thing to mention is the removable motherboard tray. And I did try installing the motherboard to the tray outside the case and then putting the whole thing back in. And of course there is an option to actually use this as a test bench outside the case, or you could even install your graphics card and then put the whole thing back in in one go. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this. This is such a big case and you've got brilliant access to it. And actually you won't have any bother installing your motherboard in the case. Um, and actually it's probably more difficult, I think, actually picking the whole thing up and trying to get it into place once you've got the motherboard in. And if you're gonna do it with a big massive graphics card like this as well, I don't think that would be a good idea. It's gonna be really heavy and really awkward to do. And the other thing is I wouldn't recommend installing your graphics card before you plugged in all your cables. So it's a good idea in theory, I think, being able to do this outside the case, but in reality, I would just install it in the case like you normally do. Final thing to mention is if you are planning on installing your graphics card in the upright position, your 12 volt high power cable or your PCIe cables are gonna plug in towards the front of the case. And the one thing just to be careful of is that your power supply cables have enough length on them to actually reach the graphics card. And I would sort of worry that most standard power supply cables are probably not gonna reach there and you probably are gonna need a cable extension. So moving on to the things I like about the case, and there's absolutely loads I love about this case in terms of the improvements Lee and Lee have made. I've already mentioned I'm an absolute massive fan of removing this front pillar. I think the differences with having the pillar there and having it removed are like night and day, and it just looks so good with it removed. Um, other things that they've done, I love the removable motherboard tray more, not so much that you can remove it, but the fact that you've got the different height options and you can configure it in a particular way that you want if you're gonna go with particularly a custom loop and you, you've got big radiators you want to put in one place or the other, it's gonna give you much more options. The toolless installing of your graphics card is absolutely brilliant. Um, as well as this at the back, the magnetic cable door is really good. I love the hard drive cages, the fact that they are hot swappable. Um, again, if you're not actually planning on installing drives at the moment, you can still go ahead and plug the cables into your power supply and into your motherboard. And then if you do want to install drives in the future, you're not gonna to have to worry about routing cables through your case. All you're gonna to have to do is slot the drive into the tray and push it in and that's it installed. Other things, the little blanking plates that you got on the side fan bracket, I think are a great idea. If you do wanna go with 120 millimeter uni fans, and with the new reverse uni fans, you may well want to do that because there isn't a 140 millimeter version available at the moment. And this is just gonna make your build look that little bit cleaner. If you are somebody who really wants to install your graphics card in the upright position, this case is absolutely game changing in terms of doing it. Installation is so much easier in that side bracket. Being able to have your IO at the top or at the bottom, having different positions on that bracket, with the really long 900 millimeter riser cable, you're gonna have it tucked neatly at the back where you can't really see it, and you're not gonna have any issues at all reading that cable. So I think Lee and Lee have really learnt from the upright GPU kit with the first version. There was a few different versions of the riser cable being longer and shorter, um, but I think they've got it just right with this one. And again, the little cutout in the PCIe bracket at the back if you want to have your IO at the bottom, or the rubber grommet at the top if you're wanting to have it at the top, is just gonna mean even your cables coming from the graphics card are gonna be really tidy as well. So now I want to come on to the things I didn't like about the case, and while there's absolutely loads I loved about this case, there was two small things I didn't like. So while I absolutely love the hot swappable hard drive cages at the back, and they were really simple just to swing these out to install your drives, I really wish they had made some way to lock these drive cages in place once you push them back into the case. 
because for example, when you were tilting the case down on its back, these hard drive cages would just simply swing out and make lying the case down on its back that wee bit more difficult. The other place you had trouble with them was once you actually installed cables in behind them, the cables did actually push the drive cages forward a little bit, and it would just been really nice to be able to lock these drive cages in place in the case. So the other thing I wasn't such a big fan of was the little metal clips for securing your cables at the back. And I much preferred the fixed style clips that come in the original O11 Dynamic Evo. It may just be simply the fact that I had used lots of cable extensions and things were a little bit bulky at the back of the case, but I did actually end up having to push some of the cables into one of the hard drive cages to get everything fitted in. If I hadn't used cable extensions at the back, I don't think I would have had any bother. And had this have been more like the original O11 Dynamic Evo, where you're able to use the full height of that space at the back of the case for your cables, their heads simply in behind those metal clips. In this case, because the bracket was such a small distance, there wasn't actually that much room to fit your power supply cables in. And I think if it's not broke, don't fix it. And the cable management at the back of the original O11 Dynamic Evo was some of the best that I have ever used. This one is okay, but it's not as good as the original. So now we've reached the point in the review where I need to tell you, should you go out and pick up this case? And this case is absolutely brilliant. It's unbelievable the way Leon Lee can continue to make it better and better with each version that they do, but they most definitely have. And it's not just a few wee simple subtle changes. There's absolutely massive changes which are gonna improve the aesthetics and the building experience, and also the options that you have to build in the case. So if you have a big enough desk to fit this case on, and you've got a big enough wallet to pay for it, I think the extra $75 that you're paying for the Excel version compared to the original version, it's an absolute bargain for the extra space and extra features that you're getting. And particularly if you're wanting to mount your card in the upright position, I would most definitely go with this case over the original O11 Dynamic Evo. And if you're wanting to go with a custom loop where you're going to fit lots of big radiators and lots of fans, this case is really going to have you covered. And in terms of aesthetics, being able to remove that front pillar is absolutely massive. And I think this is actually one of the biggest features in this case. So I can 100% recommend this case. It's absolutely brilliant. So if you are thinking of doing a build on it, um, check out the full step-by-step -step build guide that I've made on it. You'll put a link to that in the description. If you want to see that best fan cooling configuration, drop me a comment. And like I say, I have enough of you do that. I will put it together. So if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.